here let us discuss about aortic regurgitation so in the valvular heart diseases we have two types of valvular abnormalities one is stenosis and second one is the regurgitation in simple language we can say that stenosis means opening problem regurgitation means closing problem if the valve is not opening properly or if there is a stenotic valve then we will call it as stenosis and if it is not closing properly it is because of the weakening of the valve we will call it as a closing problem so the aortic regurgitation is the closing problem closing problem of the aortic valve closing problem of the aortic valve with a retrograde flow from aorta to the left ventricle right after the blood is ejected into the aorta then the, the semi lunar valve closes if the semi lunar valve that is the aortic valve if it is not closing properly then there is a regurgitation of the blood from aorta back to the left ventricle this is called as aortic regurgitation there's a reason we are calling it as a closing problem so in this there is no isovolumetric relaxation so why there is no isovolumetric relaxation because in the cardiac cycle we studied that isovolumetric relaxation is nothing but relaxation of the ventricles without change in the volume but because of the closing problem because of the regurgitation there is a backflow of the blood from aorta to the ventricle there's a reason the ventricular volume increases so increasing volume of the ventricle from aortic backflow does not give you isovolumetric relaxation there's a reason one important point you need to remember over here is no isovolumetric relaxation why there is no isovolumetric relaxation because increase in the ventricular volume as the blood is regurgitating from aorta to the left ventricle so here we have acute regurgitation as well as chronic regurgitation so what happens in the acute regurgitation which means it is a acute problem so the third point is acute aortic regurgitation we will see what is acute aortic regurgitation in the acute aortic regurgitation there should be a normal sized left ventricle there is no change in the mass of the left ventricular muscle right so in acute aortic regurgitation there should be a normal sized left ventricle right and because of the regurgitation of the blood from aorta to the left ventricle there should be increase in the volume right there should be increase in the volume so whenever the volume increases during diastole because of the regurgitation of the blood there should be increase in the diastolic pressure there should be increase in the volume there should be increase in the diastolic pressure of the ventricles so diastolic pressure of the ventricles and whenever the diastolic pressure of the ventricle increases because of the too much volume enough blood cannot reach the ventricles especially from the left atria there's a reason left atrial volume increases so increase in the diastolic pressure of the ventricles increase in the left atrial volume as well as pressure whenever left atrial volume as well as pressure increases there will be increase in the pulmonary pressure right there will be increase in the pulmonary pressure whenever the pulmonary pressure increases which means increase in the pulmonary capillary wedge pressure can cause increase in the pulmonary congestion pulmonary congestion that is nothing but pulmonary congestion leads to pulmonary edema and it is a medical emergency so acute aortic regurgitation is a medical emergency in acute aortic regurgitation remember that 
the ventricular size the ventricular muscle size especially of the left ventricle is normal there is no increase in the mass of the left ventricle because it is acute aortic regurgitation but there will be increase in the left ventricular volume because of the regurgitated blood because of this there should be increase in the diastolic pressure of the ventricles and because of the increase in the diastolic pressure of the ventricles there should be increase in the left atrial volume as well as pressure which leads to increase in the pulmonary pressure pulmonary capillary wedge pressure increases that leads to pulmonary congestion and edema there's a reason we will call acute aortic regurgitation is a medical emergency and what about the second one called as chronic aortic regurgitation so the next one is chronic aortic regurgitation so after completing the acute aortic regurgitation what is chronic aortic regurgitation in chronic aortic regurgitation remember guys there should be a compensatory dilation and eccentric hypertrophy of the left ventricle because of the continuous flow of the blood from aorta to the left ventricle there should be continuous increase in the left ventricular volume because of this continuous increase in the left ventricular volume there should be compensatory dilated left ventricle this compensatory dilated left ventricle can cause eccentric hypertrophy of the left ventricle so here compensatory dilation of the left ventricle right which causes eccentric hypertrophy eccentric hypertrophy right and there will be a large compliant ventricles as you can see in this picture that the ventricular volume is too much right the left ventricular chamber is enlarged which means it is a large compliant ventricle and remember that there is no diastolic dysfunction what we can see in chronic aortic regurgitation okay so the third important point is no diastolic abnormality no diastolic abnormality so there is no diastolic dysfunction what we will see in chronic aortic regurgitation and there will be a decreased retrograde pressure transmission to the pulmonary circuit because there will be a compensatory enlargement of the left ventricle because of the left ventricle is already enlarged to compensate the regurgitated blood and there is no question of increase in the retrograde pressure transmission to the pulmonary circuit that's the reason we will say that decreased retrograde pressure to the pulmonary circuit so there is no pulmonary congestion and there is no increase in the pulmonary capillary wedge pressure and there is no pulmonary edema and it is not a medical emergency case like what we studied in the acute regurgitation so one important point is there is a compensatory dilation of the left ventricle and there is a eccentric hypertrophy of the left ventricle and there is no diastolic abnormality and there is a large compliant ventricles large compliant ventricle not the ventricles ventricle because we are talking about the left ventricle large compliant ventricle and remember that no increase in pulmonary capillary wedge pressure and no pulmonary edema and decrease retrograde pressure transmission to the pulmonary circuit so because of increase in the ventricular diastolic volume but only a slight increase in the diastolic pressure because as the volume increases automatically pressure decreases in acute aortic regurgitation we studied that increase in the diastolic pressure of the ventricles but here because of the compensatory dilation of the left ventricle there is a slight increase in the diastolic pressure very slight increase in the diastolic pressure and there will be an increase in the diastolic volume so remember that in chronic aortic regurgitation there would be increase in the end diastolic volume 
in chronic aortic regurgitation there should be increase in end diastolic volume so majority of the patients are asymptomatic for years but eventually because of the eccentric hypertrophy and because of the compensatory dilation especially because of the eccentric hypertrophy eventually patients lead to systolic dysfunction as long standing cases this chronic aortic regurgitation leads to systolic dysfunction especially of the left ventricle right now as i already mentioned that there will be an increase in the end diastolic volume in the chronic aortic regurgitation whenever end diastolic volume increases remember that stroke volume increases so here in the chronic aortic regurgitation there is an increase in the end diastolic volume whenever there is an increase in the end diastolic volume it causes increase in the stroke volume with retrograde flow produces increased systolic blood pressure but decrease in the diastolic blood pressure which is equal to that of increase in the pulse pressure now let us see the values over here with the formula we know that end diastolic volume is increased in the chronic aortic regurgitation what is the normal end diastolic volume of the left ventricle it is 130 ml it is the normal value but in chronic aortic regurgitation it will be approximately 150 to 160 ml increase the end diastolic volume that is 150 to 160 ml in the chronic aortic regurgitation so because of increase in the end diastolic volume there would be increase in the stroke volume so normal stroke volume normal stroke volume is equal to 70 ml but in the chronic aortic regurgitation approximately it is 90 to 100 ml so because of stroke volume increases the pressure in the aorta increases during systole systolic blood pressure increases so because of increase in the stroke volume from 90 to 100 ml there would be increase in the systolic blood pressure right there would be increase in the systolic blood pressure at the same time because of the compensatory dilation of the left ventricle there would be a decrease in the diastolic pressure so because of the decrease in the diastolic pressure there would be decrease in the diastolic pressure in the aorta also so increase in the systolic pressure in the aorta and decrease in the diastolic pressure of the aorta so increase in the systolic bp and decrease in the diastolic blood pressure so for example if you see increase the systolic pressure approximately if you take systolic pressure is 140 and the diastolic pressure is 70 instead of 80 the difference is 70 right what is the normal value what is the normal pulse pressure 120 is the systolic blood pressure 80 is the diastolic blood pressure normal value is 40 normally in the normal physiology but in chronic aortic regurgitation because of the increase in the end diastolic volume because of the increase in the stroke volume from 70 ml to 90 to 100 ml there will be increase in the systolic blood pressure that is 140 instead of 120 but the diastolic blood pressure is decreased from 80 to 70 so the difference between systolic as well as diastolic blood pressure is called as pulse pressure that is equal to 70 normal value is 40 but now it is increased to 70 right there's a reason we will say pulse pressure also increases in chronic aortic regurgitation not only that because of increased blood flow to the left ventricle there would be an increased ventricular wall stress with a decreased coronary perfusion pressure in diastole can lead to angina in absence of coronary artery disease so whenever you see angina in the absence of coronary artery disease remember that it may be because of a chronic aortic regurgitation so what type of murmur generally we will see in aortic regurgitation so regurgitation happens during diastole there's a reason it is a diastolic murmur so murmur is a diastolic murmur and the nature of the murmur is decrescendo in nature 
so it is a decrescendo diastolic murmur that begins at s2 what is s2 s2 is the closure of semi lunar valves that is aortic valve as well as pulmonary valve so immediately after the closure of semi lunar valve what you can hear is the s2 but because of the incompetency of the closure of aortic valve immediately after s2 what you can see is the murmur which is called as diastolic murmur and it is decrescendo murmur immediately which can be heard after s2 this is what you need to know about aortic regurgitation so one important concept we need to know about uh, this aortic regurgitation in physiology perspective is the most characteristic feature of the aortic regurgitation is it has a very low diastolic blood pressure as well as very high pulse pressure remember low diastolic blood pressure high pulse pressure is a characteristic feature what you will see in aortic regurgitation by this we completed aortic regurgitation in a cardiovascular physiology